it's a beautiful morning and um, you know one beautiful thing about today being the last day in the month of February 29th 2024 uh, I don't know in another four years we'll see another <laughs> 29th of February like Joy was saying she had a friend who celebrate like every four years so happy birthday to that friend I'm sure she will say hello to you when it's our turn but I want to give glory to the Almighty God on behalf of every one of us here our listeners our viewers our friends our well-wishers people who um, has been on the altar of prayer for this nation and for everything and everyone around us good morning to you Lagos good morning to you Nigeria good morning to you all over the world my name is Adi Joki Adi David it's all about family and values and um, anytime we are here you should know that one thing I've termed my family and value to be is family when you have a peaceful family you have a peaceful nation and when you have a peaceful home you equally have a peaceful nation so as many of you you want to be part of us you can join us as i bring in joy um, good morning yeah. I, and i love the fact that you call the joy abu very oh. complete like yeah <laughs> you know we are rounding the months with joy abu completely <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> yes thank you for being our guest on family and values yes like my better half lori said i have this wonderful friend who is very selfish because her baby oh. comes in once in four years <laughs> And so any time is like that. We used to beg her, celebrate 28. She said, no, my birthday is 29. So today, hmm, Queen, we are coming for you. We eat that rice. All the whole four years food you've been. Now we are coming. You know, happy birthday to you. It's been a wonderful year. Um, for you being a good friend to me, I really appreciate it. Yes, um, we are back here. Today is the end of February. And... Um, it's you unusual because we all know 28 and today is 29. Yeah, most people actually thought February ended yesterday, you know, but yeah, today is the end of February. We thank God for life, thank God for protection, thank God for preservation. But um, the past two weeks has been a bit emotional. I lost two people within an interval of days and so close to me, so close to me because I just spoke with one over the phone and the last thing he said was, I'll see you when I come back and I never saw him again, you know. So it shows us that we should be good to humankind, we should be kind to people, look out for one another, um, and God will see us through. Welcome to Family and Values. My name is Joy Abu, like Lori said. <laughs> Like, I didn't just say, yeah. I know her name is Joy Abu, and you heard her when she said, she said later because I mentioned the old food, Joy yes, Abu. Yes. Anyway, you can follow us, myself and Joy Abu, on our social media platform. I am on Olori at Dejoki Adobe David on Facebook, and um, I believe from my Facebook, you can always get my Instagram handle, because that is a little bit, you know, you know these cameras they did one for me and finally i got a hat to put something like cross so you can follow me at olori adijoke adubi david on facebook and olori ala joke on instagram joy of course mine is abu joy official across all my social media platform abu joy official sometimes it's, if you just see that joy abu official you should know that yeah that's me you see the beautiful face over there <laughs> so today me and the lady we wear a touch of yellow unplanned Oh, and I thought when I saw her walking into the studio, I was like, ah, today's day. The brightness we today, are to today, you. today, today, today. Okay, now this is also um, um, saying a condolence to the Felix Ojo Akinla, the family, mm -hmm. Clement Tina Akinla, his husband, um, will be laid to rest today in um, Owo. Okay. And then um, we pray that the Lord will rest his soul and comfort you and the children and the rest of the family. And God will grant you journey mercy back to Lagos safe and sound. So I'm um, talking about our loved ones. I, the topic we're discussing today is actually <laughs> one of those topics when it comes to health because our Thursday is all about health mm. and like I said I always want us to come to the studio kitted you know maybe next week Thursday we'll do that we'll be coming to the studio with an outfit that resumed us coming from the gym coming from the gym yeah, right? because about our health. Thursday is all about it's health all about and health, when you talk about health you don't need to have all yes, the excesses you, need to keep you know you need to keep fit and be ready to do it okay now the we, topic we're it's to, a joke and we mm, joke. you know <laughs> like like like, like um, I told ah, I told us to, you know, so 
Now, um, the topic we're talking about today, we'll be discussing, it's very, very, very hmm, powerful. Uh, my grandma has it. I have an uncle so dear to me who has it. Um, I think our producer said she also, and some of our siblings. But I'm just so great. And you too. Me, I. <laughs> it's like me. So I, I think it's another time for you to get someone around you. Tell someone to tell someone. Yes. It's time for you to join us on Family and Values this morning. And um, you are not going to regret it, I tell you, because we have a guest in the house. So right now, we need to go for this um, mini future. I'll be right back. So don't go anywhere. Join us. Okay, welcome. Good morning. Once again, it's Family and Values, and we're about to go into the topic of today. This morning, um, according to our mini feature, you heard it. Asthma, asthma. Are you asthmatic? Uh, maybe you never know, or you yet to discover, or find out that you are. I think it's time for you to really stand by and be part of it. You can join our conversation on our social media platforms. Uh, or on our screen right there, you have the number. Just send a text message, please do not call so that you're not interrupt this discussion. But with your message and on text message, it can be easy, to be easy for us to call and also attend to it um, adequately because of our time. <laughs> to do justice to this, we have a doctor in the house in person, Wally, Dr. Wally Adeyefa. Okay, he's a medical practitioner, a doctor actually with Ori Agege um, General Hospital at the Lipo here in Lagos. So, can we please welcome this beautiful man? He's looking so handsome, he's looking so handsome, so suited and morning. fitted. You know, people like this, by the time they are 70, they'll still be they'll looking still like, like this. You know, so they can see some people on the road uh -huh. that would look like, ah, no, you know, I'm sure I'm Madame will be having some issues with. Uh, Many will not know he's married. That he's, he's married, though. Don't think he's, he's married. He's with children, and See, he's showing us his ring. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's welcome. Good it's good so good to have you. Good good you. Thank you so very much. Today? We're, We're good. Fine. We're good. Thank so, you okay. Um, going to the business of the day. What's the best way to describe asthma? Um. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try as much as possible to avoid using ambiguous words Please, on the thank you, no. thank you. I will come to the lowest level, thank you. especially you for that. the sake of our viewers, yes. so they can have a better understanding thank you, of what asthma is. Thank you. Yeah. Don't mind my voice, but the way it sounds, please accept it that way. <laughs> so asthma can simply be defined as a chronic inflammatory disease of the lungs. Okay? So which means it involves what we call airway obstruction, that's point number one. Then number two, inflammation of the airway. There are two different times. Airway obstruction means reduction of the passage through which the air passes right from atmosphere into our lungs. And then inflammation is the swelling of the air passage, talking about the bronchioles and the trachea. And these two processes eventually lead to one, coughing. Then number two, it leads to wheezing. Talking about wheezing, wheezing is like wheezing sound that someone hears when the air passes through the lungs. Then it also leads to shortness of breath because the patient that is affected will not be able to breathe adequately. Then the fourth thing that happens is it involves tightness of the chest. Okay, because when there is decrease in the air flow to the lungs due to the inflammation of the passage, automatically it will create a kind of pressure or pain to the chest in trying to like, you know, undergo what we call inspiration and expiration. Okay, then talking about this so-called asthma, and the way it can also be put is that due to the exposure to certain things which leads to the obstruction of the airway or the inflammation and I'm going to mention but few the stuff we call environmental factors number one talking about the pollen grains 
talking about the dust mites, talking about, you know, people having cockroaches at home, their molds, all these things, exposure to them can actually lead to airway obstruction. I will give a few examples. To some of us that have rugs at home, then like, you know, all this clothed furniture, because they have ability to absorb dust. Mm. So in the process, by exposing yourself to them can trigger asthma in many people. For those that are not aware of all these you know, trigger factors, some other things that also happen is, in some cases, it can be, it can be a kind of genetic stuff, in the sense that if you come from a family where there are history of asthma, you are actually born into it, grow up with it, and in the process, if you are not careful and you are exposed to things that can trigger it, it will lead to this word called asthma. Hmm. Okay, asthma is affect a lot of people. Should I say not? Some people, especially those who come from the fa who have the family history of asthma. Number one. Then number two, it also comes with the fact that if you are working in places where you are exposed to some, you know perfumes and other things that can actually trigger this asthma in you and you are not actually conversant with it, you can easily have an attack. Mm. Then to bring it in, in, in a simpler way, so the word asthma can easily be summarized in such a way that the moment you are exposed to certain things which makes you not be able to breathe very well or that causes coughs in you or make your just to become so tightened that you are finding it so difficult to breathe, to talk, or even to walk. This simply refers to the word we call as. Okay, Dr. Um, doctor, I really appreciate the way you've spoken about it because, of course, I, I am one person that has this issue of um, asthma. Now, um, let's bring it now. Is there a specific age group that one, that let's say it starts from all? Who are the people that are easily prone to asthma? And secondly, is it curable? I'm asking this because some people now will say, okay, when you expose a newborn baby, maybe in the process, the baby can have pneumonia, and which can lead to. So is there a certain age group, or it can be cut across any age group? And is it curable, you know? So those are two questions. Like Thank you very much. Asthma can affect any age. Take it from me, whether you are young or old, body prevalence differs. In children less than 14, okay, asthma occurs more in boys mm. than girls. Wow. Okay? In children less than 14, 14 asthma yes. occurs more, more in boys, in boys than, 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 in girls. than girls. Then uh, in adolescents, I'm talking from teenager to like 40 years, it's commoner in females. Than males. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So that is a, there's a switch. Yes, there's a switch. Ah. Okay. At the tender age. At the tender age. Boys, yes, in boys. Grow older. Girls, girls. 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 Wow. But from the you know from teenager you know up to like forty, it's more in females than male. Okay. They're talking about is it curable? It's, it 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 can only be managed. It's not curable. Very true. Because it has a long time effect. Okay, in people. Though as we can, you know, it's like it's like all this hypertension stuff. Are you getting which is not curable, but it can be managed. It can be controlled. Okay? And there are certain things which you need to know about yourself if you're asthmatic. Because the whole goal is ability to know yourself, ability to know the things you need to stay away from, ability to know what to do when you're in attack or crisis. Okay. Um, it's time for us to go for our word of map or and um, if our Zoom guest is available, we'll surely come in with him. Let's go for the word of map Okay, so family and values and um, right now we're still having, um, is our Zoom guest available? No. Okay, so as we continue with the program, I want to ask doctor, what are the preventive measures one need to, you know, put in place if you know you're asthmatic? Okay. 
thank you very much. Once you, we have to accept the fact that you are asthmatic because there are some patients that will come to the hospital. You know, when they come around, they manifest all the symptoms, but yet you tell them that you are asthmatic. They will say, God forbid. Mm. Mm. Because <laughs> the, the, the word as well to them is as if mm. a taboo or a death, a, a death sentence or a cause. Mm. Probably because they've seen someone in the past that has such an attack and that passed on through that. So you have to accept the fact that, okay, you're asthmatic. Then the next thing you need to do is you need to know the trigger factors. What are the things that can predispose you or that can cause the asthma attack in you? Mm -hmm. And you can only do this by being, you know, observant. What are the things that when you get close to them, you get this kind of, you know, difficulty in breathing, some kind of irritation, some breathlessness, you know, you start offering and you want to clear your throat and all those stuff. So you need to abstain from those things. Okay, for example, if you're cooking in the kitchen and the fumes from the food, you know, get irritated and you stop any time, you, you perceive odor from pepper and all those things. You should know that you have issues, you, you know, with, 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 with your respiratory system, okay? Even though you don't know whether you are asthmatic or not. And then, you know, choking, who all sprays a choking pipe around you? You know, there's some pipe that you spray and it's be as if you don't want to come to an end. Yeah. And, you know, and the moment such thing, you know, you perceive such odor, immediately you want to catch some breath that you should know that, okay, I think you have such symptoms, okay? Or probably you are in a dusty environment, whereby, you know, the only area is dusty on a dusty road, or probably, you know, the smoke from exhaust of cars, so it's actually, you know, getting to you and you get disturbed. You should know yourself that it's, uh, it's as if you belong to that group. So you have to know all these trigger factors. Or probably you work in a chemical company where they make chemicals, you know, and anytime you get exposed to you, you get disturbed in such a way that you want to get to a place where it's well ventilated, automatically you may be having a problem with asthma. Okay, the thing you need to do first, after you've accepted the fact that you're asthmatic, and most of the time, you may not be able to do that except you see a medical doctor mm. or a physician. Mm. So anytime you're getting all this, you know, irritants and all those disturbances, you need to get to the hospital, get to talk to a health professional. And once it has been ascertained that you have asthma, the next thing you have to do is try to learn more about it. Know more, know more about the trigger factors. What are the things you need to stay away from? What are the stuff you need to do without that can help you? And by the time you get this information and you also try to read more about them, it will help you to avoid those things we refer to as trigger factors. Mm -hmm. Trigger factors are those things that when you get exposed to them, it leads to attacking you. Mm -hmm. Okay? So by the time you try as much as possible to avoid your trigger factors, okay, but, but no matter how you try to do that, occasionally you discover that you still have the symptoms. Okay? And but it may not be as bad as when you are exposed to those facts. Okay? Mm. When you have such a problem, what do you do? What are the things you need to do first? Try to leave the spot, go to an area that is well ventilated, try to catch some breath. And when you do this, you discover that if the symptoms is mild, after like 30 minutes or one hour, you get better. Okay, so when you get better, all you need to do, okay, try to visit the doctor and try to let the doctor know, know that, okay, this is the problem I encounter. And the doctor might decide and prescribe some things for you that you can do as own remedy or own remedies to what? To, to, to get out of the attack. Okay, among those things is trying to get you an inhaler, teach you how to use them, okay, and when you get this, also drugs, you know. Over counter drugs that you can take that can suppress the symptoms. Depending the time you come around to see the doctors. So when you try to do this, it's going to help. Other things you can also do, because it has also been discovered that lack of exercise too can cause a problem. Hmm. Hmm. Are you hearing this for the first yeah, time? Yeah, I'm hearing that for the first time. So we we'll engage on you know aerobic exercises. It says that deal with respiration, you discover that, you know, it helps your lungs to function very well and you become better. Hmm. And another thing, which I also want to 
let you know that can also predispose to the issue of asthma, which you need to like be careful of. Is adding weight. Obesity is a problem. Obesity. Yes. Obesity. But how do you know that you're obese? You need to work with a BMI. That's person Max Index. So how do you calculate this? You try to get your weight. You divide it by what by the square of your height, or what in meters. When you do this, you are going to get a value. Usually, values above thirty is actually talking about the overweight to the obesity. So you need to work. So if your BMI is high, you, you know mostly above thirty, you need to work on yourself. Try to drop some, you know, to drop some weight, burn some calories, and you oh. discover that it's going to keep you fit. Okay, doctor. Let me let me add this. Um, you've said a lot, and I'm someone that is, can literally relate to what you're saying because yeah. it's something I'm dealing with. And by God's grace, I'm I'm trying to be able to know those symptoms and things that can trigger my so I don't get those crises like when I was much younger. But what are those symptoms that we ignore that we feel like? Because I was just explaining something to you. There was the time somebody said, is it that January to December, you're always having this, you know, always dragging my nose. And I'm saying, my son, too, he's, he has joined that line of dragging his nose. And I'm looking at him like, with one eye, like, hello, young man. You know, so what are those symptoms that we ignore, that we feel like is not important, but it's really important for us to check, to know if this person is in the part of being asthmatic or not? Thank you very much. I will start with there are there is this particular word referred to as uh, allergies. Uh, when we're talking about allergies, it can come in different forms. It can be you know true true rhinitis, so we call it allergic rhinitis. It can be allergic conjunctivitis. You know, talking about these rhinitis, you see people sometimes they try to clear their nostrils and their throat make some kind of funny sounds. Mm. Are you getting it? Yes. And to them, they believe that ah, I can't get much breath. I need to clear my throat. And you know, sometimes it can be disturbing the person, you know, in the, in, in the public. Very, very Yes, yes. Very, very, yes, very, very, yes. very yes. I'm telling you. Now, sometimes you want to clear your, you know, your hair and you start, you know, scratching and all those things, making some funny sounds. Okay? For people who are in this category, I want to tell you that you need to see your doctor. Because these are the things that predispose to asthma. Okay, and many asthmatic patients, these are very, very prevalent. They are common. Yes. Okay? Yes. Or probably sometimes you just scratch your eyes, scratch, scratch, yes. scratch your eyes. Yes. And you know, it's it, 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 it not known to you know, allergic conjunctivitis. Mm. Okay, these are the few signs, okay, which you need to like be careful of. Watch. And, and, and you know, it's funny. Some parents will bring their children to the, to the clinic. Oh, doctor, my child is scratching his eyes. You know, he's having a recurrent cutter, you know, cold and all those things, mm -hmm. flu. And I, I, I will smile. Do you get uh, to be candid? Okay, even though in my family are not asthmatic. Mm -hmm. Okay, but all these, you know, common allergies we have there. Okay, mm -hmm. so especially when, 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 when the environment is cold. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the trigger factors. Yes. You know, like you, you know, some people will tell you, I can't, I can't see all the AC. It's, it's too chilly, and before you know, they start looking for sweater. Okay, the such people, they can't, they can't cope in cold weather. You know, yeah. such when they get to places like you know UK and other advanced countries where you have this yeah. winter and all this stuff. Yes, where the you know the winter, yes, the temperature is is below zero or is zero degrees. Are you getting? They will find it so difficult to thrive in such an environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, exposure to cold air might be a problem as well. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. And when you are, you know, exposed to cold, probably after rainfall, or you know, you are in AC and all those things, you start feeling some kind of respiratory, you know, disturbances. That's also a problem. Okay, and that alone, we we, we also let you know that okay, ah, this person might be us might be asthmatic. Do, so those things we don't we don't actually pay attention to them, but they are problems. Or probably you're having this kind of cough that refuses mm. to go. Though there are some coughs that are related to other, other pulmonary yeah. problems. Okay? Like you know this chronic obstructive pulmonary disease mm. can also bring about cough, you know, 
pneumonia and, and they, are, they are just the major diagnosis to yeah. asthma okay but there's one thing about asthma that is synonymous okay you discover that even apart from the fact that they are having this cough there's this you know business sound that comes that through the nose. Yes. yes. And you know, even when you are sitting yes. down with people, as a medical doctor, sometimes I tell, Madam, are you sure you're fine? Because I can hear the way you're breathing. Hmm. Which is supposed not to. So you don't need, That's you know, a stethoscope to ask or take before you be able to pick That's a reason. So right. Yes, that this person is having a problem. Hmm. Are you getting me? Yeah. And sometimes somebody will tell you that, do you know, some tightness in my chest? Hmm. Are you kidding me? I can't, I can't, I can't breathe very well. You think that my, my breath is short. I know. So many people tell you that I can't, you know, my breathing cannot get down. You know, there's a problem. Such people, you need to investigate more in, into them and you discover that. By the time you take history, many of them, they have family history. Oh. It's a genetic thing in them. Also, when they're grown up, you know, they develop, they grew up in these areas of, you know, where they are, where they're exposed to all these environmental factors that triggers asthma and when they grew up with that you discover it becomes worse because they didn't get attention on time, on time. thank you very much okay so um you took that out of my mouth anyway <laughs> about to ask my question so we people will stay we we actually pick this topic because you know the heat extensive heat and the climate change was part of things that many actually take it for granted and say the weather is cold is hot you know the temperature mm -hmm. is on the high side so i need to and these people are asthmatic mm. is is it in any way you know going to affect them even in the hot weather we are there things like you were discussing with our earlier when we went on the world of marvel that some things you eat what are those things the people who have asthmatic patients what should they do? What are they supposed to do to help them to, you know, to have a healthy life? Because you said, you know, I'm a, it's, it's a lifetime thing, but with time, if you know what you have to do. So I gave you two questions now. During the high temperature, the heat, the climate change, do they have anything they need to watch out for? The food they eat, the meal, the fruits. Then people who are around them, their loved ones, their family, what are they to do to help them? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. One. Um, talking about the climatic changes, number one, like earlier said, for someone that's asthmatic, cold is not your friend. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, um, you know, when an environment when everything is hot, what, what even chill ice block? Please, please, ice block with asthmatic Why, why are you like? Why, 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 you need to be very careful of it. The hot one now. The, yes, the hot one. I, I can say you should balance between the two. Okay. okay? Because though if you're in the hot weather, it's not as bad as when you're in the cold. Okay. Because the major thing is that, you know, exposing seeing cold as a trigger factor. Hmm. The, the one thing it does, there are three basic things that happens to their lungs when they are in attack. Hmm. Well, there will be we obstruction. The way is, you know, the, 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 the broker is a bit, you know, when, 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 when it relaxes, are you getting it? allows the free passage of air. But the moment it's exposed to the trigger factor, what happens? It becomes inflamed. Inflamed means it becomes swollen. It becomes edematous. Are you getting it? Thereby re reducing the lumen through which the air passes. Are you getting it? And when this happens, it makes it to be so difficult to pass because you are exposed to a trigger factor like cold okay and then this this it causes it it causes what we call a bronchospasm bronchospasm is it, it sounds big but what it does is that it, it just reduces some chunks and with that it activates some cells along that passage which brings about the production of mucus that's why most times you see them producing you know, fear. Blame. You know, yes, they try to like, like, <coughs> yes, they want yes, to speed out something because there is overproduction of 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 of, of, of fear during the attack 
okay, due to the activation of the mast cells. Okay, so when you're exposed to those things, with the exposure to, to its weather, you discover it becomes better to them, but not to be so hot that it's, it, it, it starts choking. Okay, then other things I want to also mention is that, especially for mothers or parents that have kids, you need to pay attention to them. When a child is playing, you know, it's trying to laugh, you know, playing, you know, engaging in regular activities, physical activities, and suddenly the child becomes, you know, trying to cough, it's coughing and it's, it's, it's trying to appear choking. Okay, you need to quickly be alerted that there's a problem. Okay, or a child, you know, sometimes a child used to like play very well and at a point it becomes so slow. Mm. After, you know, playing ball, you know, engaging in physical activities, the child cannot talk very well to the extent that probably that child cannot even make a statement. Mm. Okay, mommy, I, 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 I want to, do you know, there's a problem. So such, patient, uh, such parents should pay attention to their kids. Any child that has such, you need to see the doctor. Okay, then for people that are living around patients that are asthmatic, you, you also need to read, investigate, hmm. pay attention. Yeah. What are the things that when these people are exposed to, okay, they have problems, you don't tell them to go and cook or fry things. This is not the time to fry plantain, to fry chicken, okay, to fry your oil. <laughs> do you get? So you need to stay away from that. You don't also <laughs> allow them to engage in strenuous exercises. God bless you, do you get? Yeah. Because at the end of that, there will be an attack. Yes. Okay? But I'm not saying that that doesn't mean that you get to work and you know work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I want to quickly ask this to you in one question. Yeah. My okay. first question is, when we started, you said if you tell somebody you're asthmatic, the first thing is God forbid. God forbid. Is there stigmatization <laughs> to asthma? To mm. asthma? Now, I, I think when I was in school, in secondary school to be precise, people just knew me like that girl that once that attack on and then when i realized myself everybody's staring at you with yes. one eye you know but i've not really faced stigmatization but for people is this stigmatization to asthma and then there's this question i want to ask. why is it that people that have asthma they, they kind of have a broad shoulder you know like just see their shoulders is it like, true they have is it true shoulders? that every uh. asthmatic patient has broad shoulders or it's just a mere belief does okay well about the issue of stigmatization. Mm. You know, it's just like someone they have this, you know, this epileptic attack or seizure. Mm. You know, suddenly they just become unconscious. Are you getting people yeah. just like, oh, what could be the problem? Don't get closer, don't touch him, we don't do those things. You know, after the person, you know, after the spasm, you know, after the jacks and all those stuff, it comes back. The same, th the same thing with, you know, with asthma. Especially when it comes in a severe form. Yes. Because when we're talking about the severity in asthma, it gets to a point whereby it occurs every day, sometimes day and night. But you know, it's usually worse at night. Mm. Probably because of the weather and all those things. Stuffy. Yes. And then, you know, you shut your window. Yes. Yes. And all that. Yeah. And, 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 and your careless about, about to solve. And you don't, you know, you, you refuse to seek help, especially in African culture, whereby we don't like going to hospitals. Mm. Do you get When it has not gotten to the climax, people will not visit you. Mm. They see hospitals as, you know, as mug, as, 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 as mortuary, as places where you don't visit. Mm. Okay, they believe that the only time you go to the hospital is when you are, what, you, you are seriously sick. Stage. Yes, it's not. You know, I do some session because I used to tell a patient that look, I love a, pre a preventive medicine than curative because prevention is always better than yeah. cure. Do you get? And it's cheaper. Mm. It can prevent some complications. Yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? So it 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 is people can easily be stigmatized because of that. Because if you have recorded attack in the public, in the classroom, okay, probably you know you're in a place whereby that you have, you have central air conditioner. Do you expect them to switch it up because of you? I think, I think my first year in the university, yes. we had this massive combined class. Yes. I had that attack and it was terrible. When I woke up, you can imagine the, the, the crowd on you. 
and for so this you go to class I, for, yes. for like two weeks to be since i couldn't go to school i i just, exactly. I just felt like there should be a change of university for, for you so you can see there's always a stigmatization to it but if you know what to do hmm. you can prevent the future oh, ones yeah. yes you can stay a very long time i saw a patient an older woman yesterday she came to the clinic and you know, I engaged her in talking, asking her about herself. And by the time she was explaining to me, I know my trigger factors, I don't move that then. You know, I have this inhaler that I use when I have an attack. And you know, I know how to apply it, how to use it. If it doesn't work, I have some drugs. I don't want to mention this because I don't want yeah, to encourage course, people. Yes, yeah. to go over the counter. Yeah, yes. Do you get it? She was mentioning those things. And you know, by the time I took the history very well, I discovered that she had been going to hospitals to know more about herself. And for years, she yes. had never had any attack. attack because yeah. she, she was able to yes to manage, manage yes to work with her process. symptoms and it's helping are you getting me you have the second okay with this of broad shoulder okay the people <laughs> that have been seeing over yes with with with, with asthma, asthma. Ah, probably because they don't go to gym <laughs> Hmm. So probably because they don't go to gym that's why they have a broad shoulder <laughs> so because so the okay probably the reason why such, you know, should I say, um, speculation, or how should I put it? Um, was made. Assumption. Assumption, thank you, I love that one. <laughs> Could be, you know, at a point of severity, hmm. there is what we call, you know, this intercostal recession, you see the rib cage moving out and healing. Mm. physically with children in some adults you know with severe attack and you know people believe that when you gym and do all those things it causes apartheid of the muscles mm. which means it makes the muscles you know to add to add to add, more to add more box to it and it makes you look but really <laughs> i don't think it that said, doctor, <laughs> i wish we could have all the time because right now we are being chased ah. <laughs> we are being chased we are now running now, I um, want to say a big thank you to uh, thank you, Doctor. You have said mm. so much in this short time, and <laughs> thank I'm thanking much. God that you are here oh, on fine. this day. <laughs> Please, if you have text messages or questions, send it on the number. We will surely get back to you, Doctor Wally. Adeyefa will get back to you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank doctor. You, I this is you know when you're talking something that is relatable to somebody. <laughs> I knew I should shout in the blood, but anyway, that's that's my day. Thank you so very much for thank being you. part of Family and Values today. I know you have learned a lot. I know you people that have asthma, that have patients, that have people that live around that are asthmatic, you now understand. And the most important thing is know your trigger. Mm. Know the preventive measures. Know when to use your inhaler and definitely seek the help of medical experts. My name is Joy Abu. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. So as you seek the help of medical experts, also learn to go for exercises. Avoid those things that you need to get yourself out of so that the trigger factor, you know, you watch it and mind how what you eat, where you find yourself, the environment, and people that love you will surely be there to guide you. And my name is Rimana the Jockey out of David. On behalf of everyone that made today's program a success, oh God, we'll bless you and thank you for being.